Okay, we're going to go ahead and start chapter six. We are going to start off in chapter six finding what's known as rate of change and slope. Now, rate of change and slope are really the same concept. We use rate of change uh, when we're dealing with more like with word problems. Um, and then we also have a formula for the slope, which is rise over run. And it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I'm going to show you how to use that today. And we will talk slope, rate of change, but they are the same concept. All right, so first we're going to look at different types of slopes you will run into. All right, a positive slope. So if you have a graph, you'll go ahead and just draw these graphs over here. Positive slope goes uphill from left to right. So this is an example of a line with a positive slope. Okay, another example is when we have a negative slope. When we have a negative slope, it actually goes downhill. All right, so positive goes uphill, negative goes downhill. An undefined slope is vertical. So if we have a line on the coordinate plane, that's vertical. We call that undefined. And then a horizontal slope has a slope of zero. Okay, so a horizontal slope has a slope of zero. So those are all the different types of slopes that we run into when we are calculating slopes. So let's go ahead and do an example. The first one is finding rate of change, which again is just slope. But this, when we're talking rate of change, we're not given an x and a y. We actually have to find out what our x and our y is. So let's look at this. For the following data, is the rate of change for each pair of consecutive days the same? And what does the rate of change represent? Okay, so what we're going to do, we need to first figure out if number of days or rental charge is our x and our y. Our y is always our... Uh, independent variable. So on this chart, the rental charge is going to depend on how many days it's being rented. So this is our y values. These are our x values. Okay. And to do rate of change, it's the change in dependent variable over change in independent variable. Now we have to check, check a couple of consecutive days. So we're going to check one and two days. So if we look here for days one and two, our rate of change on our dependent variable, what is the difference between our dependent values? 75 minus 60 over the difference in our number of days, which is 2 minus 1. So that gives us 15 over 1. All right, so that, those, for days 1 and 2, it's 15 over 1. Now we're going to check for days 2 and 3, because it's wanting to check consecutive days. Okay, so let's do day 2 and 3. So we do 90 minus 75 over 3 minus 2. Well, 90 minus 75 is, in fact, 15 over 3 minus 2, which is 1. So, so far they're the same. Let's go ahead and check 3 and 4. We'll just check one more, 3 and 4, and we'll see if that happens to be the same as well. So we have 105 minus 90 over 4 minus 3. Okay, again, this does give us 15 over 1. So it's our slope for consecutive days is 15 over 1. But then it asks us, what does this represent? Well, the 15 on top is going to represent your y values, and your y value is a rental charge. Okay, so the rental charge is in money. So we would basically label this as $15, and the bottom represents the number of days, so per one day. So that is what the rate of change is. The rate of change is $15 for every one day. So that's what a rate of change is is it's your change in your dependent variable over your change in your independent variable. All right, the next example we're going to be looking at is we want to find out if each slope is positive or negative, and then we also need to find what the slope of each line is. Now, when you're given a line on a coordinate plane, 
you can actually just count your slope because slope again is rise over run. All right, so we can find one point on this graph. We'll pick this two one here. We're gonna count our rise and our run to get to zero four to this next point. We have to rise one, two, three. So that's a positive number. So it's a positive three rise. Now the run is left or right. Run, we're having to actually go left two units. And because we're having to go left, it's a negative number, so it's negative two. So then on this graph, our rise over run is three, which is our rise over negative two, which this just makes the whole fraction negative. So your slope is a negative three halves. And then to answer the question if it's positive or negative, well, we can actually look at the sign of what we got here. It's a negative three halves, so that means our slope is negative. But we can also see that just by looking at the slope and see that it goes downhill. So it is a negative slope. On the other one, let's again, we'll start with one point and we'll count our rise over run. We'll start down here. To get to the next one, we go up two. So that's a rise of positive two. And then we have to go right one unit. So this rise, this rise over run is two over one, which is a positive slope. It's a positive slope and you can tell just because it also goes up a hill. So that's a positive slope. Alright, let's go ahead and look at example three. We need to find the slope through the points E, 3, negative 2, and F, negative 2, negative 1. Now for this problem, this is where our slope formula from the beginning is going to come in handy. Our slope formula, and we represent slope with an M in algebra. I don't, if we use an S, an S looks too much like a 5. So an M, you can't really get it confused with a, uh, with a number. So M is a good number for, or a good variable for slope. So just be used to that. That's what we call slope is M. The formula is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. What you have to do is you've got an X and a Y on E. And then you've got another x and y on f. We need to designate one of these our first set of points, our first set of coordinates, and the second one our second set. So, and it doesn't matter which one you label, we'll just go ahead and call e our first set. So that means this is x1 and this is y1, all right? And then we have our second set of points, which gives us x2 and y2. And at this point, it's a matter of just plugging into our formula. So on top, we have y2 minus y1. Our y2, we're actually going to pull from right here, okay? So we get, we get negative 1 minus, okay, so that was y2. y2 is taken care of. Now minus y1, which is a negative 2, so it's minus a negative 2. Okay, minus a negative 2. You have to be careful when there's double negatives. Okay, and on the bottom we have x2 minus x1. So x2, we come up here to our x, which is negative 2, our x2 is negative 2, minus, and then our x1 is a 3, so minus 3. So now we simplify the top, we simplify the bottom. Well, on the top we have a double negative going on. So that means we change the change it. We get negative 1 plus 2 on top over negative 2 minus 3, negative 5, and then negative 1 plus 2 is 1 over negative 5, which makes our m negative 1 fifth. So our m equals 1 fifth. That is our slope. Guys, I'm going to tell you, you've got to be sure you know how to do your adding and subtracting of positive negative numbers. Otherwise, this is going to be very difficult for you. You've got to remember those rules when you're adding two negatives or adding uh, two numbers with different signs. So make sure you may need to go back and refresh those rules. Um, otherwise, you will be likely to miss some of these. All right, letter B, find the slope of the line through 1, 2, and 4, 2. So again, we're going to designate one of these as our first points and one of them as our second. We'll do K as X1, Y1. And we'll do L as X2, Y2. So again, our formula is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So we're going to pull the Y value from our second point, which is 2. So we get 2 minus, and then our y1 is 2 over, and then our second x is 4 
minus 1. So on top we get 2 minus 2, which is 0, and 4 minus 1, which is 3. Now, when you have a 0 on the numerator of any fraction, that whole thing is 0. Okay, that whole thing is 0. And if you remember the slope of a line that is 0, that means this is a horizontal line. So that one is a horizontal line. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next one. We have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, we'll name p a first point and q second point. So our second x value, or I mean, I'm sorry, y2, our second x value is negative 1. I'm so, yeah, negative y, I'm sorry, guys. y2 is the y value from our second coordinate, which is this one right here. So we do negative 1 minus. Now we're going to pull y1. y1 is 2. So we have y, or negative 1 minus 2 over x2 minus x1. So we have 4 minus 4. So what happens here, we have negative 1 minus 2, so the numerator becomes to be negative 3, but then on the bottom we have a 0. Anytime we have a fraction with a 0 on the denominator, that is a vertical line, which means it's undefined. So it's undefined slope. And it is a vertical line. And so that's how you find slope. The key part is to just take your time and make sure you're careful when you run into some double negatives and make sure that you remember those rules for adding, subtracting, positive, negative numbers. It's going to come in handy for you. That is the end of the first lesson of Chapter 6. Thank you for listening.